For years, Samsung's software development cycle has remained mostly under wraps, but something unexpected happened with One UI 8 that changed everything. Thanks to a vulnerability in Samsung's OTA servers, tech-savvy users managed to uncover something big. Internal, unreleased One UI builds meant only for developers were suddenly within public reach. This gave rise to an unprecedented wave of early previews, leaks, and experimental features even before Samsung launched its official beta program. The situation was wild. Without having to be a Samsung employee or part of a private testing program, power users figured out a way to download internal versions of One UI 8. These weren't early public betas, these were raw, unfinished development builds straight from Samsung's internal channels. It all started when users discovered a trick through a loophole in the OTA over-the-air update system. By exploiting this server-side weakness, they could not only download the internal One UI 8 firmware, but also continue receiving updates like regular users. Samsung had been preparing One UI 8 quietly behind the scenes, likely starting development while the Galaxy Z Flip 6 and Fold 6 were still in the pipeline. But by the time leaks were circulating, the Z Fold 7 and Z Flip 7 were already getting close to being revealed. Suddenly, One UI 8, the same version Samsung hadn't even officially rolled out, was in the hands of curious users, testers, and content creators. What followed was a goldmine of feature leaks, UI redesigns, and system-level experiments shared publicly across forums and tech channels. The mastermind behind exposing how this exploit worked was a known figure in the community, Gerwin Vigison. He revealed that a tool created in C-Sharp allowed users to directly interact with Samsung's photo servers. By using that tool in apps like CheckFirm, users could fetch metadata from unreleased builds, decrypt it, and access test software that should have never been outside Samsung's labs. According to bug reports submitted to Android Authority and detailed on forums like Sami Guru, users managed to bypass multiple layers of access control, everything from internal URLs to decryption logic and even signature verification. This exposed not only unreleased builds, but also Samsung's internal development strategies. Developers often test experimental features that never make it to public release, but now users could see those experiments live. New UI animations, unreleased lock screen interactions, changes to the settings app, camera enhancements, and even dropped features, everything was visible in real time. Naturally, this huge leak streak couldn't last forever. The moment Samsung realized what had happened, it was just a matter of time before the loophole was sealed. Reports suggest that someone, perhaps even the same users who benefited from the exploit, reported it to Samsung, possibly through their bug bounty program. Samsung responded swiftly and patched the issue. As of now, the door to these unreleased internal builds is closed. That means no more early access to One UI 8.5 or One UI 9 through this method. The timing is crucial. One UI 8 is nearing its official rollout, likely starting next month with the Galaxy S25 series. Samsung's already launched its newest foldables and wearables, but behind the scenes, the company has started firmware development for the next-gen Galaxy S26 devices. Under normal conditions, One UI 8.5 would have quietly followed the release of One UI 8, arriving later on the Galaxy S25 lineup, and One UI 9 would have launched with the Galaxy Z Fold 8 and Z Flip 8 next year. But thanks to this patch, don't expect another flood of early feature previews this time. That also means tech enthusiasts who used to depend on check firm and server-side digging will no longer be able to reveal upcoming features before Samsung's ready to share them. What made this leak even more exciting was how it blurred the line between insider access and public testing. For once, regular users had a sneak peek into Samsung's internal decision-making. They could see which features were being tested and which ones were getting scrapped before release. That level of transparency, accidental as it was, gave fans an edge and even influenced discussions on what Samsung should or shouldn't include in the final version. Interestingly, these leaked builds weren't just broken test versions, they were surprisingly stable and updated regularly. For a few weeks, those lucky enough to install them could see the software evolve daily, new toggles would appear, animations would be fine-tuned, and UI layouts would be redesigned overnight. It was like witnessing software development in Fast Forward. Now that the exploit is gone, the excitement of that live development window is gone too. Future updates will again follow Samsung's official schedule, first developer builds, then closed beta programs, followed by limited regional rollouts. No more cutting the line. Still, the fact that such a major vulnerability went unnoticed for so long is a bit shocking. 
It shows how complex OTA systems are and how difficult it is for even giant companies like Samsung to secure every entry point. And it also highlights the passion of the tech community, how a simple trick can reveal so much about the direction a company is heading, feature-wise. So while One UI 8.5 and One UI 9 will still come, and they may bring exciting changes to Galaxy phones, tablets, and foldables, don't expect to see them before Samsung says it's time. The leak party is over, but who knows, as long as there are developers, there will be workarounds. Maybe not today or tomorrow, but the cat and mouse game between Samsung and its user base isn't ending anytime soon.